When I think back, uh, it's actually a long time already that I began to be aware of human trafficking. This issue of human trafficking became a priority for our congregation and our sisters in other countries are also working on this issue. Uh, we have a woman uh, in our shelter right now who comes under that type of category. She's from Africa, but she worked in a uh, Middle Eastern country as a housekeeper and um, very, very wealthy people, but she never got any money. Uh, lots of work, but no pay for the work. And um, so then my term of office was over. I came back to the United States in 2002, and um, Sister Sheila and I uh, talked over and, and started our uh, efforts. And my interest in human trafficking is predated by my basic concern for women in general, and that's where I feel a real kinship with the Seroptimists. Maybe I was an underground Seroptimist even before I met the Seroptimists. Where this came from, I can't even pinpoint, but as I've been tuned into issues that women have to deal with, even in our own country, I feel like we're always dealing with the short end of the stick. So over the years, this has been percolating in my, my heart. Our community has these big international meetings every six years, and I was asked to be on the planning committee for that meeting. And even though women are on my mind, I came into the meeting thinking, I really want to hear what other people around the world have on their mind. But lo and behold, the issue of women came forward and specifically one of the issues was human trafficking. So out of this meeting we drafted a statement um, saying how we want to um, respond to women. There was a whole list and then each unit or each country was to take the statement back and to say what two areas could we address. So our country, the United States, said we want to address human trafficking and we want to look at the education of girls and women. And at that point I was in a transition in my life also which uh, coincided with Sister Jean's. And so we were kind of taken with this issue, what can we do? Uh, we decided to come to California because it was one of the two, well actually one of the four big states for incidences of human trafficking. Surprisingly enough, Hope House was not even in our original plan. Sister Jean does a wonderful newsletter um, called Stop Trafficking, which raises awareness. And as I said before, I was just on the alert to see what the need was. But both Sister Jean and I went around to various workshops to learn as much as we could about human trafficking. And in that period of time we heard repeatedly the need is there for housing. A human traffic victim, because oftentimes they have a legal case prosecuting their trafficker, it may take 18 months to two years and during that time they are not able to work, they have no means of livelihood, so they need a place to stay. So after hearing this repeatedly, we decided five years ago that we would open a shelter. And we did that in Central California, about an hour and a half south of San Francisco. However, we got very few referrals because the women needed to be near their lawyer, um, near what they were involved in, and we were just far enough away that that was not possible. And we got the green light and the invitation to come down to San Diego. We were told that North County had the need, so that is how we landed in North County. So our house will be three years old as of March 1st. As we look back at these three years, um, I think we've learned uh, to know the resources in North County. When we came here, we actually knew no one. We have developed a, a growing network of agencies with which we collaborate. These agencies provide kind of the holistic um, 
services that a woman needs when she comes. And so all of these resources fill in the needs of these women. Uh, one of the services I would like to highlight that I think is absolutely tremendous is coming out of the project that the Seroptimists thought through and have um, funded, and that is to provide exposure, social uh, skill development, uh, entering into uh, work settings where the women can be exposed to the type of non-professional and professional work that is available to them depending on their education and their skill level. But this has been tremendous. Um, two of the women that we currently have have both profited so much from this service. Um, in fact, one of the women, uh, she did so well at the agency that they said if and when she gets her work permit, uh, they would hire her and as of just a couple weeks ago, that's exactly what happened.